Recently some aliens came to the Earth and have stolen the one and only thing that's most important to humans. They've stolen all semicolons. We need games in these difficult times, so let's find out if I can make one using Unity and C Sharp, but no semicolons. I will remake the game 2048, which was very famous not so long ago. Hmm, maybe earlier than I thought. I feel old now. In case you don't know, 2048 is a game where you have a table of 4x4 cells that have numbers in them, which are the power of 2. So 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and so on. You can move all cells left, right, up, down, so every cell goes in the given direction until it hits the wall or another cell. If two cells with the same number colliding with each other, a new cell is created with a doubled value. After each step, you get a new cell with a 2 or 4 in it. Your goal is to reach 2048. Oh, and by the way, this is a cat. Sadly, there are no cats in this game. There are two types of people. These three are the following. Who don't know how to write programs. I'm sure these people are totally confused right now, but don't worry, that will change in a moment. You will be even more confused. There are Python and JavaScript developers who don't understand what is my problem, and people who actually know C Sharp and currently think that I'm a fool. And they are probably right. So after opening the default script I realized that it has three semicolons right away, so I had to get rid of those. No problem, I just have to type more, so for example, instead of monobehavior, I have to write unity engine.monobehavior, so annoying, but doable. This is another cat. In C Sharp, after every instruction you need to put a semicolon. Is this means that I can't use instructions? Well, yes, but actually no. I can use control statements, so basically conditions and loops. Um, why loops? Each of these expects a condition, so a true or false value, but that could be anything. For example, an assignment. The assignment operator returns the assigned value, so we can compare that to whatever we want and then do nothing. But during the condition, we've given a value to a variable. We can also call functions and check their return value. So we have a lot of possibilities, but let's see if I can create functions. There are two types of functions in C Sharp one which has a return value and one which hasn't. The latter is easier, I just do things and don't return anything. The former is hard, I couldn't even find a solution to that because I needed the return statement and I must put a semicolon after that, so yeah. I even experimented with pointers but I don't want to talk about them. I can't even sleep since then, the scary pointers are hiding under my bed, it's terrible. So let's not even talk about it. Let's return back to the functions. How could I return a value from a void function? The answer is through the parameters. If I use the out keyword, I can pass the argument by reference, so if I modify it in the function, the original value is also modified. Ok, now I can do things, write functions, but how could I call these functions? The problem is that I can only create void functions, but those don't return any value, so I can't compare their results, which means I can't use them in an if statement. I thought. But I found a really strange way. So I can check if the result of the function, which is nothing, is an object or not. It will be never an object, but this will be evaluated to a true or false value, so it's perfect for me. The only problem with this is that Rider thinks it's invalid, but if we try to run it in Unity, it's actually working, so I'm ok with that. I hope this won't cause too many errors. The last thing is creating variables. I can declare them the normal way, but I can declare them through function parameters and when calling a function with an out parameter. Creating fields is impossible, so I have to store the game state in a different way. Basically I explained everything, so let's see how the actual game was made. I created a grid which has 16 cells with a text component in each cell. Remember, I can't use fields, so I have to find the board whenever I need it and read the values from there. This is very expensive, but there is no other choice. When you press a key, the moving happens. It is the same algorithm for every row and column, so I implemented the merging and moving algorithm for a four element array and used that in every situation. So the moving has two steps. 
First we merge the tiles which have the same numbers in them and then move every cell to the beginning or end of the array. So in this example, if we want to move left, we merge from left to right like this and then move every not empty cell to the left. If we want to move right, the result will be a little bit different because in this case we go from right to left. Another challenging part was how can I check if the player made a valid move. For example, in this configuration the left move is not valid because it doesn't change anything. So if the player pressed the left button, no new test should be created. In this case I run all the code and then check if anything has changed by storing the previous state here. The goal of the game is to create a 24 state block. If this happens I show the win screen but let the players continue the game if they want. However, somehow I need to check if this screen already has been shown, so I won't show it again and again every step. For this I created an empty game object with an empty child game object. I attach the win game tag to the parent and deactivate the child. When I show the win screen I find this game object by tag and activate the child object. So the next time if I want to show the end screen I check if it's deactivated and it's not, so in this case I won't show the win panel again. As you can see I used comments throughout the entire code, so it's even more quality code and it also has very few problems. By the way, I still don't know how the aliens could steal all the semicolons. And where do they put them? Oh, here they are. And I have some more semicolons for you. If you wanna see them, watch the video on the screen right now.